Welcome to this oral history interview, part of the developing series of interviews focusing on live music venues and experiences on Route 66, centered around Springfield and Greene County, Missouri, and Lebanon and Pulaski County, Missouri. This series is supported in part by a grant from the Route 66 Corridor Preservation Program of the National Park Service. My name is Craig Amison with Missouri State University Libraries, and today's date is October 21st, 2022. And our special guest today is Ernie Bedell, an accomplished Hello. musician who was born into a large extended family of musicians and performers in the Springfield, Missouri area. He has played bass for a variety of bands since the 1960s, including the KC Express, which toured from the Midwest to California and had a, uh, a real hit song in the mid-1970s titled This Is The Place uh, with Stax Records in Memphis. His solo album, Let the Old Man Play, was released in 2016 and is streaming and available for download everywhere. Yes. Uh, among his other current pursuits, he is playing with the Arthur Duncan Jazz Trio and the ABS Band, and they've been performing in various venues in the area this year. Mm -hmm. And he has a brand new book yeah. that just came out, uh, yes. like this week, right? Yes. Um, Generation B Music and Melodies. Correct. Correct. Um, this interview is taking place in the Dwayne G. Meyer Library on the campus of Missouri State University. Ernie, thank you so thank much you for agreeing to participate in this project and coming uh, here today to talk with us. Um, first question, right off the bat, when and where were you born? Born 1952, here in Springfield. Father Leo Bedell, mother Kathy Bedell. Uh, born and raised here. Okay. Always have been. And you were exposed to music from the time you were born. Yeah. Uh, but, and I, I want you to talk about that a little bit, but I also want you to tell us when did you first start playing an instrument? It wasn't 15 I started playing an instrument. Mm -hmm. But now, when I say playing, I actually started playing, really trying to play. Mm -hmm. And that was the bass, but I didn't really start picking up an instrument until my seventh grade year at Pipkin Junior High School, and uh, I was it was the acoustic, mm -hmm. and I it was by accident really that I that I picked it up. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Donald Sharp, who was an English teacher, mm -hmm. he. Uh, he was uh, after class, and I was uh, in trouble. And I stayed at school. I stayed at the school, so I was walking by his class, and I picked in his class, and seen Mr. Sharp playing this guitar, playing the acoustic. So I stuck my head in there, and he invited me in, and we we was chatting. I said, I want to play. I want to play a acoustic like you, Mr. Sharp. So he said, Well, you go get one, and and we'll see what we can do. Acoustic guitar. That's what I started playing. At, uh, at in my seventh grade year, and I stayed with that for a couple of years. Uh, then it was through my brothers. Uh, one was playing guitar, wasn't playing drums. Then I said, "Well, we want someone got to play bass." So the next thing I know, I got playing bass in my freshman year in high school. But music was not my forte. Basketball. Football and sports. Athletics, yeah. Athletics mm -hmm. was my thing. Mm -hmm. Music, oh, I, I like music because I like to enjoy watching my brother Tommy play and, and my brother Joe play, but next thing you know, it just, it rubs off on you. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, so, so it was, um, you, you, were, you were hearing music oh, all that yeah, time. Oh, yeah, oh, the whole time. Living, living right next door to my grandma. Right. You know, our block, there was my grandmother, our family, across the street, my uncle, next to my other uncle. So that Prospect Street was poor houses of Bedell's. Mm -hmm. But next door was my grandmother. And my grandmother was the vocalist. She could sing, and my uncle was a piano player. So when we grew up, come the crack of dawn in the sun, if you were living on a farm, you hear roosters and, and all the varmints running around the farm, but in our neighborhood, you wake up to the sound of singing and piano playing. Mm -hmm. And you know, after a time, you're like, oh man, this is, 
this is, wow, mm-hmm. where's Grandma and, and Uncle Lloyd? We don't hear them. Mm-hmm. But you wake up every morning, and that's what you hear. What kind of music were they, were they playing? Were oh, you they were playing gospel. Uh-huh. Gospel, uh, mostly, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, he liked to play the boogie-woogie. And, but Grandma didn't fame the boogie. She didn't sing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, but most of the time, it's uh, Grandma was singing, and Uncle Lloyd be playing, and that piano would echo early mm-hmm. in the morning. It's echo, and and then uh, if you didn't hear it, something's wrong. So as a kid, when you hear something like that, you like, oh, this is what growing up is. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. I mean, this right. is, you know, I, this is pretty cool, you know, and it rubs off on you. Then you and then you, you hear the drums, well, uncle and my other uncle. You know, when you're surrounded by it, mm-hmm. it's going to rub off on you. You yeah. know, I don't know if that's the right term to use, mm-hmm. rub off. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody got their way of saying things, but you, you become acquainted with different sounds in sure. music, you know. That's a good thing. Mm-hmm. It's not all bad. You may not want to, for it to be like that, but maybe it was supposed to be like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And your brother played. What 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 kind of music was he playing when you when you started picking up the acoustic? You know the hardest thing. The hardest thing when I was writing my book. The hardest thing for me to do is what to call my brother. His real name is Tony, T O N I E. Mm-hmm. But he goes by Anthony. Mm-hmm. But his he was called Tommy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but everybody in town knows him by Tommy, aka Speedy, aka Speed. So it was like I write this book. I'm like, what do I call my brother? <laughs> <laughs> do I call him by his real name? Well, I said I don't know what I do. I just say his real name, aka, aka, aka. <laughs> he was a drummer. Okay. Uh, in high school, he was known for his speed. That's how he get his nickname, Speedy. Mm-hmm. He was known for his speed. And uh, he used to play drums, uh, did a lot of shows at Brenda Lee when he was coming up. Mm-hmm. He, he, I, when I was growing up, uh, here's this, this picture of, her, of this white lady all in, 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 in the bedroom. Now, we didn't have, when I say bedroom, they had one bedroom and, the, and the four boys, mm-hmm. three boys. I said, man, who's this? You know, you don't pay no attention. Well, it was Brenda Lee. Mm-hmm. He was doing shows with Brenda Lee. Mm-hmm. And my brother, uh, Tommy, he, he was, he, he did marching cadence at uh, Lincoln and at Central. He created some of the marching cadence. Mm-hmm. And he was, he was a drummer. And, mm-hmm. and uh, he was a show drummer. He was, he was, he was tough, you know? And when, when he was uh, managing the band when we was kids, you know, he would always tell us, you know, you need to do it like this. He would drum it, he'd throw the drum, he'd throw the stick on the tom-tom and catch it, you know. You know but we didn't know he'd seen that Uncle Dave do that too. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, he was, he's, he's, he was very instrumental to his, to his younger brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was very instrumental. Tommy, Tommy was, he was the man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, shifting gears, what? What was the live music scene like in Springfield during the 1960s and 70s? <laughs> For me? Yeah. From your perspective. Tough. Mm-hmm. In, so, what, in what respect? Well, you, from my, from my standpoint as a black musician, and a lot of black musicians are like this, you didn't have a choice. You had to learn it all. You had to learn music. Country, not country, country, country and western, mm-hmm. pop, rock, R&B. You had to learn it all. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna be a if you're gonna be a black musician, rounded black musician, and you want to play, get ready for the calls. Get ready for the calls. You might get called, hey, what are you doing? Do you want to come do the country gig with me? Yeah, I can play country. That's all I hear on the radio. Mm-hmm. You know, turn on the TV. One of my favorite good talk players, Roy Clark. I didn't miss Roy Clark. 
Yeah. But you turn on the radio, well, you might always forget that. You better tune in to Kansas City. Mm -hmm. You know, James Brown was outlawed because he came out with Say It Loud and Black and I'm Proud. Bow, you won't get played in Springfield, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. you, you know, too bad. Right. Uh, go by the 45. You know, so it was tough. Uh, Springfield was no different than the southern part of Mississippi. Uh -huh. There wasn't no places to play uh, uh, for us. And what irritates me, when people ask me that, they think that it started with the KC Express, but it didn't. Mm -hmm. It started with a 14-piece band called the Fabulous Elites. Right. And, and we was kids. And when I say kids, I'm talking about from 11 years old up to 17. Mm -hmm. Where's kids? Right. But my brother Tommy, again, was a manager. He was 24. <laughs> <laughs> but look at the job that he'd done. And so it was, he found those places to play, you know, and it, it was tough. It was nothing easy about it. Everything that that band uh, did, we earned. You know, it wasn't nothing easy mm -hmm. from getting aged from, from the whole nine yards, getting aged, getting getting ran out of town, getting ran out of Thurman, Thayer, Missouri. You know, it wasn't easy, mm -hmm. you know, but we endured. So that's the part that I think, you know, that people have to understand in, in the in the book. I, I speak a lot about that. You know, this this is the missing part of people that I, I was associated with that nobody forgot about. And it wasn't easy. We worked. <laughs> yeah, this was in the 60s, right? Yes. The Fabulous Elite. That yeah. Was, that was going to be my next question. That was, and you guys played like at the In Crowd Club downtown? Uh-huh. Tell, tell us about now. Yeah, that's th now, that's around that Route 66 area. Exactly. Like, yeah, am I right? Yeah, I want, yeah. I want to talk about that. There yeah. used to be a place, uh, the Hamburger Joint, it was called... Um, <laughs> yes, we were going to ask you about that. Too. Yeah. It, was called, it was called Don Lowe's. Everybody went to Don Lowe's. And right across the street from Don Lowe's was the in crowd. Yeah. And the in crowd was ran by a TV personality named Ron Arno. And Ron was cool. As we say back then, Ron was cool as cotton. <laughs> and we played at the in crowd on a Sunday. Not on a Friday or Saturday. We played Sunday matinees there. You know, I, I like it was six to nine or six to ten. Mm -hmm. But Ron let us play there, and it came one of one of our spots on a Sunday. So the Fabulous Elites were be playing somewhere on a Friday and Saturday, and then on a Sunday we be at the end crowd. Then everybody gets done with the in crowd, run across the street to Mac to Don Lowe's, and man, that was a, that was one heck of a Sunday. You know, it Did y'all play there for a long time? Yes, we played there for a long time on a Sunday. And that was a regular Sunday gig. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if we didn't play there on a Sunday, it was probably because we were somewhere out of town, mm -hmm. and we got back to too late or we didn't get back till, you know, later on that evening, stayed overnight somewhere, probably in Illinois or in Kansas somewhere that we didn't make it back. And uh, our parents, uh, <laughs> our parents, when I say our parents, I meant the parents of the guys in the band. Right. And they would, they would say, uh, Tommy, don't work, them, don't work them boys like that. And then he would say, they all right. <laughs> And we were, we were, it was all right. Parents, parents was real. Parenting didn't take no crap. Right. No, right. they didn't take no crap. They, they said, well, you go, why come you not at band practice? They weren't talking about school band practice. They were talking about band practice. Mm -hmm. Why come you wasn't at band practice? Well, I'm gonna call Joe. Joe was the, my other brother. Joe was the, kind of like the leader of the band. Okay. Time to transfer the information to Joe. Joe, we got a show coming up. Get the guys ready. Joe was the leader. And Joe set the perimeters in, in for practice to get us ready for this show that we got to play. Quickly tell me who the band members were and what they were playing. In, in the, in the, uh, they had uh, 
on drums, that was tough because the drummers in the Fabulous Elites were all David Dale's protégés. Mm -hmm. Uncle David taught all of them. Mm -hmm. So that was my brother Larry, mm -hmm. Richard Allen, Bertram Coker. All these were drummers and all these guys in the neighborhood. Took lessons from Uncle Dave. Uh, they was drummers. So the first thing that Joe had, Joe and Tommy had to do, figure out who's gonna be the drummer. My dad was wanting Larry to be the drummer. And uh, so Joe had uh, two, he decided he had two drummers. And one with Bertram and one with Richard. So the group started out with two drummers. Then on bass was myself. Joe played guitar. My brother Larry played, started out playing bongos before he switched to keyboard. Mm -hmm. Because he wasn't a keyboard player, he started playing bongos until he started taking lessons from Uncle Lloyd, mm -hmm. who happened to live next door. <laughs> On yeah. um, uh, trumpet was Rod Thomas, Jesse Knight, Richard Alvin Patterson, a rap on alto, Bobby Shockley on alto, Danny Adams on tenor, and Jesse played trumpet and rhythm guitar. Mm -hmm. So then that gave us the, the big horn section. Right. And then we had three female singers, was called the Ivalettes, with Sue Ann King, Sue Marshall, and Karen Jackson. And then we had the role manager, was Rollo Candy, and then my brother Tommy was the manager. Okay. That was the Fabulous, the fabulous elites. elites. Tell me about the uh, In Crowd Club. Tell me what you remember about about In Crowd Club. Yeah. The stage, the stage sets upward, mm -hmm. high, and you look down into the uh, the the crowd. Uh, you had to. Uh, it was a teen joint, you know, it, it wasn't for the, It was exclusively a teen joint? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it, it, was, it was a teen joint. It, it wasn't, it wasn't, a, uh, he had a hard time trying to uh, keep over 20 out, mm -hmm. you know, but that, that wasn't our concern. There was no alcohol or anything? No, 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 it wasn't no alcohol. It was strictly a, a, a teen joint. Mm -hmm. I think he probably got that idea because down on Central Street, before you get to National, there was a place called the Teen Stop. Mm -hmm. And this was across the street from the Dairy Queen. Okay. And that, that was the teen stop. But the in crowd, that was, everybody went to the in crowd. It was safe. There wasn't no problems, you know. Ron didn't have no, no, no big problem. I don't remember no incident. Because if, if, you know, when you have an incident that will cause harm, you're going to remember, believe me, yeah. I remember incidents. Mm -hmm. That mattered, you don't forget. Sure. You, know, you really you really don't forget. Yeah. Something that sticks to you, yep. that hurts you, yep. you don't forget. Yeah. And I don't remember nothing bad. Only the bad thing that I remember was trying to cross the street to get the Don Lowe's. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's good. Well, so so uh, obviously mixed race. Mixed race is playing there. What was the audience? Was it mixed race too, or was it all white folks? No, back then it was like more like 80 20, 80 percent black, 20 percent white. Okay, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that mixed because, because uh, that just wasn't the way it go went back then. Did black people feel welcome there? It you was think? mostly black going there. Mm -hmm. On Sunday. Okay, so mostly black. On, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, the, so the eighty twenty. You're talking about eighty percent black. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. It wasn't. It All wasn't. Right. It wasn't uh, 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 that mixed. Mm -mm. Not back then. Oh, uh, it should have been, but that wasn't the way that it was going. Mm -hmm. And the bands were they mostly black? What? Well, now you know what. I don't remember about any other bands. Now, there could have been other bands mm -hmm. playing up there, mm -hmm. but 
Only thing I remember is our Sundays. I hate to say that. I don't remember mm -hmm. no other. You think it's only open on the weekends? Is that? No, he, Ron, Ron, Ron was uh, uh, probably open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with the Sunday matinee. Okay. And and that's all we played was the Sunday matinee. We didn't play up there on Fridays mm -hmm. and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. It was strictly the Sunday matinee that that was that was offered, and uh, that's what management took. Do you think they were having live music any of those other nights, or were you guys the only live music they were having? I imagine Ron had more live music. Okay. You know it. It was a team club. You're mm -hmm. not you're not going to stay in business just having just having uh, 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 us up there on a, on a Sunday mm -hmm. and let your all your Fridays and Saturdays just blow out the door. Okay. okay. Nah. Mm -hmm. So so there were bands there. Yeah. Um, Don Lowe's. That, that must have that, that's, well. That that sort of brings up a point that we've talked about is how the clubs on Route 66 either were a detriment or an advantage to local businesses, that would have been, obviously, uh, it, it would have been to Don Lowe's advantage to yeah. have the in-crowd yeah. across the street yeah. because they probably fed that restaurant. Yeah, especially on a Sunday. Yeah. Now, now you know, during the week, during the week, you know, that Don Lowe's, they, that's the cruise spot. You could cruise there on, mm -hmm. you know, the, front, the cruise thing sure. back then. Sure. But now on a Sunday, there's no cruising on a Sunday. <laughs> Come on now. But they knew, uh oh, about ten o'clock, nine o'clock, we're gonna have we're gonna get busy because the stop be closing pretty soon. Everybody comes over there to download and get the burger. And then the funny thing about it, one of the guys that played in the band. Play tenor sax, Bobby. <laughs> Bobby will go to Don Lowe's prior to the show, and and for some reason, just in case he didn't get over there before Don Lowe's closed, Bobby <laughs> will have Bobby will get his hamburger and stick his ham <laughs> stick his hamburger in the belt of his horn, <laughs> and 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 by and by the time he get done with the show. Uh, Bobby would have his hamburger already ready. He had been sitting in the belt of his horn. <laughs> I never forget that. Yeah. So he made sure he's going to eat. Yes. But he always going to have his Donald hamburger in the belt of his horn, no matter what. You know, that, that was his favorite place. That is priceless. That, that, was his, that was his favorite place. I love it. Oh, wow. I'll never forget that. that was, that's the classic. <laughs> All right, we got a lot of ground to okay. cover, um, and I'm going to be respectful of your time. Uh, what can you tell us about the Sportsman's Club on Tampa Street? Was was it as bad as its reputation would lead us to believe? Um, well, you were asking somebody that couldn't tell you that mm -hmm. because it was, if it wasn't for the Sportsman Club and Mr. Milt Adams Sr., mm -hmm. That was the very, that was the second place that the Fabulous League played mm -hmm. at. The first yeah. place the elites played, we, were, we wasn't that big of a band. My Uncle Dave Grant opening of the drum key. His very first clinic was at the Lamplighter out on Glenstone and that sunshine when it used to be Lamplighter. Mm -hmm. That was his very first drum clinic. I think he had Buddy Rich or Lewis Bilson there. Oh, wow. And we played that. That was our very first outing. Uh -huh. Our second outing was when the band increased size. And if it wasn't for the Sportsman Club, mm -hmm. we, wouldn't have, we wouldn't have no place to play. Milk took the gamble and it worked. It worked for both sides. We never had, under, and again, now, during the times we played down there, there wasn't no bad. No trouble? No trouble. And then people have to understand, we were kids. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the kids, some of the, kind, the kids' parents might be out there, or kin folks, mm -hmm. you know, of the family. Now, you think you're going to go up there and, and hurt one of these kids. Mm -hmm. Now, there's going to be some trouble. 
you know. But it didn't happen like that. We went in there, played our show, and next thing you know, uh, management, which is Tommy, and Milk, and man, let's give these kids another crack. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, it was, it, we were making a little money. Mm -hmm. Milk was doing fine. Hey, kudos to Milk, Milk Adams. Thank you, Milk, because mm -hmm. he opened up the doors. Was it a regular gig? Did it end up being a regular gig there? Uh, we played that quite often, mm -hmm. you know, as a starting point. And, uh, and when, when we start venturing out, if there was a blank spot and we was able to get there, the middle of habits there, when, they, when we had a blank spot, uh, we had a place to play. Mm -hmm. And we stayed busy, you know, as if my childhood wasn't just a basic childhood. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, and some people ask, how come my brother and I don't like talking about it? Because sometimes you talk about it and people say, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, I ain't gonna talk about it because you think I'm just blowing smoke up here, you know what? Mm -hmm. So I don't really care, but I know what myself, my brothers, and these guys, these kids done all our lives. Some of it was good, some of it was, was not good, it was dangerous, but you don't have to blame me. I know if I know it's true, I could care less what you think. Right. But but I know what my childhood and these guys' childhood was like. You know, we come home from school, you know, take you do, do your homework, then you go to band practice. Mm -hmm. That was it. I knew two things. Three three stooges and little rascals. Now get home enough time to see the little rascals, three stooges, <laughs> then go to band practice. Then you get back enough time to go to band practice, good. You, the days you didn't bring, go have band practice, you're going with your dad to help him clean up mm -hmm. these built the, the janitor service. So that was my life. And you better not flunk out of school. Yeah. <laughs> you know. T tell us who was playing at the, um, at the sportsman's club. Um, uh, any other bands you, you remember playing there? He had, uh, he had, he had, uh, Probably some of the local guys like Bob, Eddie, Eugene. You know, down back then there wasn't liquor by the drink. It'd bring your own bottle. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't liquor. There wasn't no nobody had liquor by the drink. Okay. No black owned clubs. Mm -hmm. Clubs uh, had liquor by the drink. It's all social clubs. Bring your own bottle. Sell setups. That was that. That was it. So you might have you know, uh, B Bob. You know, your local musicians might come down there and do some shows or he might have some three pieces. But you have to, you know, there may have been, now when you speak of the Sportsman Club, I only remember what I've done. Because mm -hmm. you don't hear at my age, at 16, 17, right. I knew the musicians, the older musicians, but where they was playing at, whoo. Oh no, because if, if we didn't have a lot of places, they must be playing a lot. Of course, they was older. Mm -hmm. They were probably playing a lot of private shows, mm -hmm. you know. But it couldn't be that many private shows. Because because <laughs> if there was, Uncle Dave would have had them tied down. Because a lot of a lot of them, Uncle David played, mm -hmm. you know. So, and I know who he played with. So uh, it was tough. What what was the club like physically? What did it look like in there? The sportsman club. Mm -hmm. Sportsman club looked like uh, it was a hall mm -hmm. with uh, with the four by eight tables. Yep. You know, and maybe maybe a few little little uh, small tables with uh, 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 them fold out chairs. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was bring your own bottle of dance hall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, acoustically it was tough. But the, it made it through. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it it was it was a place where we played at, and people came in there to see us. You know, and we was kids. It's like, man, this is this this is great. Was it fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun, man. Cause everybody was neighborhood kids. Mm -hmm. We was all neighborhood, went to the same school. Mm -hmm. and, you know, each parent knew the each in parent. You know, there wasn't no secrets kept. All the parents put their put their trust in, into my brother Tommy. Mm -hmm. He took care of us. 
rain, sleep, snow, running up and down 44, yeah. 54 highway, 13. Ooh. It was tough, but hey, we made it. But it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun. Um, the audience at uh, Sportsman's Club, predominantly African American? Yeah, predominantly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was a few. Uh, when I say few, I mean few. Yes, it was. It was predominant. Was uh, was black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It didn't. It didn't really change until the press came out. Because mm -hmm. back when the fabulous leaf was, it was it was mostly uh, predominantly black crowds we played for. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, there wasn't no white clubs going to Harvard. Right. Period. Mm -hmm. No. Does that mean that? You were getting to play the music you wanted to play Ooh. at most most of these gigs, or not? Yes, we were getting we was because yes, we was what we only played. We played Motown, James Brown, and maybe Top Forty. We were the show band, mm -hmm. so when we go do shows. The first, the first couple of tunes would be instrumentals. Then, then uh, uh, with having so many drummers, uh, Richard and Larry will come out and they do what we call the stack show. That means we are doing nothing but Memphis, Tennessee tunes. Mm -hmm. Sam and Dave, Otis Reddy. Mm -hmm. Then once they leave, then we do the Motown, we bring the girls out and they do the they do the the Albalettes will do their things, Supremes, Martin and Vandella tunes, and then next thing you know, it was time to go home. So we it was a show band, and 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 that's how we didn't have to worry because that was our crowd. So on thing, and then then it was time to do James Brown show. Then Richard comes out, then uh, Bertram and Larry go back and do the drum the, 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 the double drum thing. Mm -hmm. Richard comes out and. He's James Brown, mm -hmm. you know, and we done a show for uh, True Davis out Dolan Park, and most of the pictures in my book are the shots that was taken of True Davis at the True Davis rally, and one shot is, is Richard Fangin, of course he was he was James Brown, you know, and uh, so that's how that's how the show. It's a huge crowd. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, over five thousand. Yeah, so yeah. everybody knew, uh, kind of knew the elites. Mm -hmm. That's what. That's the strange thing about it. Uh, a band that size, the kids that young, was under the radar. Mm -hmm. That's that's what bugged me. And why is that? I don't know. You tell me. That because that's amazing. Because mm -hmm. right now, right now. If I had, if you had a basketball team, and I coach basketball, used to coach basketball, AAU, and you know what the AAU thing. If you have a basketball team, and there's only 10 kids on the basket, eight to 10 kids on the AAU basketball team, don't you know if these kids go undefeated, everybody in that bracket or at all the basketball arenas know who these kids are. They. They don't go on the radar. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, you recognize these kids? They just, they just playing basketball. Mm -hmm. Now, with the elites, look at all these kids. Mm -hmm. And they were just ignored. Man, if they knew how hard, how hard we worked, did not get in any trouble. Parents was real parents. They didn't. They didn't tolerate nothing. It's amazing, you know. And we was young. The oldest, the manager, twenty four, managing thirteen, fourteen kids. <laughs> but these kids were well disciplined musicians. I mean, I mean, it wasn't. I don't know the right word to say. It was the organiz. It was an organization, but it wasn't. It wasn't no ha ha he he kitty stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, these kids, we us kids, we really was wanting to be this, mm -hmm. you know, because you're not gonna come home 
from school and not go play, not go outside and play, but get your horn or get your guitar and go to practice. Yeah. And you better not be late. Yeah. Well, either you, that was what you were meant to do. Because otherwise that, you didn't have to do it. You say, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. But then you find yourself doing it. And then the next thing you know, that's when your parents step in. Your parents says, well, maybe my child is pretty serious about this. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need to buy him a new horn. Mm -hmm. Now, now, well, my child serious. I'm going to buy him a new pair of Honda tennis shoes. <laughs> what kind of stuff is that? Yeah, yeah. But y'all were disciplined. It's... Better be. Yeah. Right. It was disciplined. Mm -hmm. It was disciplined. And it wasn't easy because they used to throw eggs at us when we come through Central leaving school, going to Jerry College, going home. We used to get egged and uh, stuff thrown at us because we had to carry our instruments mm -hmm. from Central. Because at Central, back then, you had talent shows. Well, maybe all in the R12 did back then. High school had talent shows. And so we had talent shows. Well, we had to carry our amps from home to school, you know, so pack up drums. And it'd, be, it'd, be like, it'd be about seven or eight of us, but our hands would be full. Mm -hmm. And we cut through Jury College, you know, so we can get down to Summit to Sherman, so someone lived on Sherman. Man, oh, wow, you get egged, you know. Yeah. You know, it's like, God, oh, you know, so it's kind of hard to run when you got your hands full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with heavy equipment. Exactly. Well, that, that, was, that was something I was going to ask earlier. You all were always bringing your own equipment. There was no house equipment, right? No. Yeah. No. It wasn't no house equipment because wasn't no man going to let you go play in their place. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You wasn't going to play. And if, and if you did, it, no. Yeah. At the clubs and all, you were bringing your own stuff. Yeah. Always bringing your own stuff. Yeah. And, they, and, and something else I thought about, too, were, were people dancing? Typically, when you were playing, what year? Mm -hmm. Well, sixties and seventies with the, with the elite. With the elite, yes. Yeah. Yes, because we play all we play all the tunes uh, that was coming off Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there wasn't nothing coming off Springfield now. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not get it twisted. There wasn't nothing coming off. You might hear my girl. You might hear James Brown. I feel good. The, yeah, right. You're gonna hear the Temptations. Mm -hmm. You're gonna hear the Four Tops. Right. But you, you not, you not going. You might hear. Know. You're not going to hear Little Richard. You're going to hear some Little Richard. You are going to hear Little. Yeah, Richard. you're going to hear. But not James Brown. No, I feel good. Case closed. Interesting. No, you're not going to hear. Uh, you might hear Papa got a brand new bag. Uh -huh. But you're not going to hear none of James Brown's real what we call hard licking. Tunes, mm -hmm. licking stick, cold mm -hmm. sweat, uh, 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 the guy licking stick, cold sweat. Uh, then there's a tune called, uh, oh, one of the most popular tunes, uh, Get Up, Get On Up. Yeah. 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 Now, you don't hear those. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but turn on, tune in to Kansas City, Saturday morning. Right, right. You'll hear them. And so that's what we, that's what we, uh, uh, keyed all our song lists off of. Now with the Express, it, it was different. That was different, sure, by then. Um, let us hear your memories about the Ritz Club. Was that on Chestnut? Chestnut. Yeah. Man, the Ritz Club, that was, that was the next level on accommodations, uh -huh. crowds. Crowds, crowds yeah, yeah. You know, the Ritz Club is where a lot of your black social clubs would have their their annual dances. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say annual, they might have an Easter dance. Mm -hmm. They might have a Thanksgiving dance. They have a Christmas dance. They're going to have a Fourth of July dance. You know, they have, and the Ritz Club became one of the main spots that they have all their annual events. And the elites, uh, played the Ritz Club quite a bit, you know. But once again, private, private uh, uh, dances. When, when they had them private dance, when I say private, a lot of them put out invitations, right? You know, right. social club. And then sometimes they 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 uh, 
opened it up to the public. Anybody can come. That's what I was going to ask. Was it was it open to the public mm -hmm. on a regular well, basis, or was it? It it depends. An now, event hall. Now 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 the rich club. The only time uh, a lot of your black people went out there is when either uh, they were having their uh, annual with that their you know, a social club was having their you know one of their dances mm -hmm. or one of their events. Uh, now your older musicians like Bob and 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 my cousin Bobby B when they played out there they they might be under the same situation you know paying for a lot of the pictures that I that I seen that you had uh, Tracy was was uh, uh, the social clubs where would change being you had something more a little laid back you know mm -hmm. uh, and the Rich Club was that kind of place the Rich Club as uh, my best memory of the Rich Club was the time that the uh, Fabulous Elites played the Rich Club. And there was a gentleman there from USO, you know, uh, the uh, USO tour. Mm -hmm. And he was there at that particular show. I'll never forget this. And we was at break. And we were standing outside, my brother and the guys, and this guy was wanting to take the Fabulous Elites on the USO tour. Because you know, back during the Nam War, oh, yeah. that was a popular thing to go on the USO tour. Yeah, you go on the USO tour, that, that wasn't out of ordinary, but that was out of ordinary for us to get invited and asked. Sure. So my brother couldn't give him no answer. And the answer had to come from our dad, because he has one, two, three, four sons that's involved in this. And make a long story short, no. <laughs> Even they want to supply tutors, you know, no. My dad said, no. And that's like, yeah, so much, they won't get a crack for that no more. <laughs> so, so much for that. But see, these are the kind of stories that you don't that you don't talk about because the average person said, "Yeah, Spring, Missouri, 1968. You therefore, yeah, yeah, sure, okay." See, these right. are the kind of story. Uh, uh, the, even the guy I'm going to talk about it, you know, because uh, you get questions, you know. So, so yes, nope. Leo Bedell said no, mm. you know, and you didn't. And you didn't ask. You didn't ask twice for a second reason. <laughs> that was a bad idea. <laughs> bad idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's um, something we've seen in other interviews. How parents were parents pretty pretty, pretty strict and, and yeah. decide. No, this you know we we want to know where you are and what you're doing. And, yeah. And because it, you know keep you out of trouble and, and keep you from you know. Being in trouble, even if you're not in trouble. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just an over avoidance, you know. Yes. You know, right or wrong, however you want to call it, mm -hmm. or however what lingo or terminology they, they want to put it in today's, uh, they done what they had to do back mm -hmm. then. Your parents, uh, or my parents, your parents, they done what they had to do back then. You know, to make sure that their their child is disciplined. Yeah, and safe. And safe, yeah. And you know what? We all made it, yeah. So it wasn't that bad. It, it was bad. It might seem bad back then, but they had their reasons, mm -hmm. you yeah. know. Sure. Um, I want to move to the KC Express. Um, you, you guys played on Sunday nights in the mid '70s at uh, the Drury Inn in the Victorian Ballroom. I think it's a, it was the name of that place. Right. Um, that I think that's now the Lamp Lighter on the North End. I think that's where that's located, where that was located, where the lamplighter on the north end of Glenstone is close to 44. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just north of, which was just north of Route 66. Yeah. Um, not very far. Um, do you remember that place? There was a, there was a, uh, the Express, the Express was doing, it, it was a unique group because everybody came to hear the Express. Mm -hmm. You know, 
we, 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 well, I say we broke the, we broke the barrier because everybody was coming to hear us play. And that was, and that was still was like this back in, in, in the mid seventies. Mm -hmm. It was still a little shaky, mm -hmm. but they, they came to hear us play. And, and we done a lot, a lot of, uh, high school proms. Mm -hmm. Then, and there wasn't, there wasn't black kids at all these schools that we were playing at. Right. But when you don't worry about color, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. The one that worry about the one that got the problem. You know, we didn't have no problem. We were going out there and 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 play music and play what we play, but we played it all. Say we 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 don't, we don't only play R and B. We went to the top forty. Sure. Took two out of the top forty. Played them like we wanted to play them, and we found that niche, and we ran with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were, were you playing regularly in Springfield? Yes, we we was we was playing. We were playing just about as much as your other top bands might be able to play. See, we, we were the only R&B band playing. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. Everybody, our competition. Was, was was all the eight or nine other bands that was playing in town. So we had not only had to keep up with the R&B side, but we also had to look good. And we also had to maintain maintain the, uh, the image back then, like everybody had the Hearst limousines, you know, pulling their equipment. But hey, so what? We got a Hearst limousine. You had, you had to, just like anything else, you had to stay competitive. Yeah, and, and part of that was the image. Too. That's the image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you had to do that. Yeah. Um, tell, tell us about some of the clubs, and if you remember any that were close to Route 66, that, that'd be helpful. But I, I, I'm interested in some of the clubs that you were playing at. There was, uh, now the Express played, there was a, okay, I like that Route 66. Kentwood Arms. Did you play at Kentwood? Oh, God. Kentwood Arms, if, the social clubs didn't have a lot of places to pick from to have their private dances. Right. Uh, Rich was the one, but that's a that was a drive. Mm -hmm. you, had a, you, you, you couldn't get too sapped up and drive out there and make it back. You know what I mean? Right. So you had to really watch what you're doing. You can go to have a good time, but you got to be careful because you still got a little ways to go to get back home. Mm -hmm. Now the Kentwood was right there on on Route 66, down the street from Don Lowe's. Right. So Kent, oh man, yes, Kentwood Arms. We the Express played a lot of. Show played the ballroom. Yes. Most of the time. Mm -hmm. Yes, played a yeah. lot of. The Kentwood Arms was one of the most. Ah, see because you had five or six social clubs. So the social, you know, Kentwood, oh, Kentwood Arms, Kentwood Arms, you know. Those social clubs kept kept with arms in business. Were, were they black social clubs? Yes. Me, me, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a, it wasn't no white social clubs. Harlem Case Express. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most of most of those was high school proms. Uh, high school proms. High school proms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe. Uh, then give and take a few, a few uh, 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 private events, mm -hmm. but otherwise than that, the express was on the road. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, because you just couldn't stay here because if, you know, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of places to play now unless you get invited to maybe an outdoor concert out to Springfield Lake. Uh, right. Now that was popular back then. Sure, yeah. you know, everybody went to Springfield Lake on the Sunday. You know, because sure. the outdoor concerts was it. All your rock bands or all your bands that was hot in the city mm -hmm. played there. So when you when you get invited to go out there and play, that means that you you you're not under the radar no more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you remember ever playing at the community center on Benton near Alberta's Hotel? The biggest thing that Springfield lost when they closed the community use center. Mm -hmm. That hurt. That only that hurt economically, mm -hmm. it hurt psychologically, mm -hmm. 
and in the black community, it's like you took away the soul. I'm telling you, Springfield Community Center was more than just a building. Mm -hmm. Man, the, the center was the center. As a kid, now when I say kid, I'm talking about kids, elementary, junior high, high school. Mm -hmm. You go to the community youth center and you walk in there and whatever you wanted to learn and do and learn it to do it right, you go to youth center. Man, the youth center, everybody, even my brother was telling me, even he played the youth center. Uh, some of the old musicians played the youth center. The youth center was one of the places uh, to play. Did your band play there? Oh, God, yeah. Mm -hmm. Elites mm -hmm. played the youth center. Express played the youth center. Express did too. You know, the youth center had that stage. Mm -hmm. So my brother loved to play the youth center because it had that stage. It's just like, it's like real life. You play on that stage, look down, look down the crowd, yeah. you know, and then you can, then we'll practice. And Miss Mary Jane, she was the director. And Miss Mary Jane would let us practice that. Uh -huh. And then we'll get, we'll get uh, some kids to close the curtains. And so we'll practice them, open the curtains up, you know, just like we've seen James Brown do. Yeah. And, and then open the curtains, and you see the crowd, bam, the band starts. Yeah. And we rehearsed this at the youth center. That's great. And, and then, um, if you have problems with your studies, you center. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn how to play guitar or play piano, you center. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn how to read poetry, you center. If we, if we need to have a political meeting or, or uh, something went wrong in the community, you center. Man, the youth center. It was the heart of the community. Sure was. Mm -hmm. And when it tore it down, it's like, mm, that goes your heart and soul, y'all. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what your young one's going to do. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you just check your head. Yeah. You, you know, I'm like, man, it's going to be tough. Do you remember the cage near? Cage, uh, yes. Tell us about that. It's that was, I don't, where was that located? By SMS? Yeah. Oh, well, MSU? Yep, yep. It's funny you said the cage. You know why it's funny you said the cage? In my book, I have a poster of the KC Express playing at the cage. <laughs> the cage was one of the express places that we played at regularly. But we had to have a couple bodyguards. Mm hmm Because sometimes there'd be some college students coming there and, mm -hmm. you know, that didn't want to act right. Is that in the 70s? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we, you know, then uh, we had a couple of bodyguards to make sure for those that want to come up there and, and act tough, that you don't act tough this way, you act tough at another direction. Right. The cage, it's funny you said the cage. Yeah. 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 I, I, remember, I remember the cage quite well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of police visit at the cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but kept playing there. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> kept playing there. <laughs> uh, tell us some of your best memories of Bebop Brown and his clubs, and because he had multiple clubs, so he's kind of like an institution here. Um, yeah. Idlewood. I mean, just t just tell us some of the ones that you remember. And, and Bebop Brown. Bebop Brown. I tip my hat off to Bebop Brown. The man, the legend, what they say. Yeah. Yeah. Bebop Brown. You know, as some people that, uh, in my book, I, I say sometimes a, a town has the ability to forget, overlook. Bob is one of those guys that, in my eyes, and some of the guys I played with, was overlooked. I say that because every, uh, when you needed something, that was Bob. You know, we all call him Bob. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a plumber. Mm -hmm. 
you know, uh oh, here come Bob. Bob don't have his horn, he got tools. That was Bob. When you need uh, part, uh, park day, first thing that blasted my mind by park day, Bob. Bob always paid, played the baby beauty contest. I can't, I can't remember nobody else besides Bob, Bobby B and Uncle Dave and Mr. Lucky playing the baby beauty contest, part day. Part day slash B-Bop's plan. Mm -hmm. Bob had a, a place down on Summit and Central by the, by the Central High School uh, Stadium, mm -hmm. and it was called 813 Lounge. Yeah, right. You know, and the 813 Lounge was bring your own bottle. It wasn't liquor by the drink. Mm -hmm. It was bring your own bottle, and it was a house. And right next door to the house was a residential. Next door to the house was a residential. Mm -hmm. And here's this one big old house was the 813 Lounge. Uh huh. You know, so don't ask me how that happened when two doors next door was <laughs> residence. But that's the way it was. Mm -hmm. And you you walk up these stairs, these flight of stairs, and you walk into this house where he just took the walls out and made made some room, put some little tables in there, and that's where his his trio and his quartet played. What years would that have been? That would be, uh, see, that was like, whew. I can't remember when uh, when Bob first opened that up. It had to be in the 60s. Mm -hmm. No, maybe 70s. Because he it it didn't last forever. And so it had to be like late 60s, early 70s, if, if, if I okay. remember right. Don't quote me on that, but. Mm -hmm. But uh, it had to be that because I was like 16 and my kid brother Richard was 15 and my brother Larry was 11. And we was, and there was an alley that went behind the 813 Lounge. Mm -hmm. You park, you could look, you, three or four cars could park back there right. and you can go through the back door. You, but if you open the back door, you can look right straight in there and see Bob then play. Uh -huh. right. and, we was in the alley. We didn't have no business down there, but we was in in the back of 813 Lounge listening to Bob. And at break time, Bob comes out there and he said, I know, he called me Little B. Little B, I know who you guys are. Now you can't come in here, but to you, sit right out here, you can listen. And we did. We didn't have no business down there. But he knew that, he knew that for some reason we were down here listening. Mm -hmm. And he let us listen. Yeah. You know, and that, that's what we did. We didn't, we didn't say nothing to we just sat right there. And that was the first time I ever heard Bob the song Red Top. Okay. And, and once we heard it, the next day in practice, you know what we done. <laughs> we tried to play Red Top. As your father said, if you can hum it, you can play it. <laughs> I love that quote. That is perfect. So if you heard it, you went back and learned it. Yeah, if you heard it. You we wasn't good at reading. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not I'm not you can set me down in an orchestra. Well, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> you can be you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Okay, I know I know what some of these notes are, but by the time they get down to this to this bar, uh, I don't know. I might be playing the wrong bar, wrong dish. But uh, yeah, so you learn you learn real quick. You know, if you can play it, you can hum it, and and that's and that's the secret. That's the golden rule. Sure, a lot of people can't hum it. With um with with bebop. I think it, that brings up a question. Where did you go back in the day to hear the very best black music in Springfield? I mean, if you just said, this is the place that comes to mind. Where did I go to hear the very best black music in Springfield? 
next door. Seriously? Next door or down to the drum key. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to hear a band. Because uh -huh. I go next door to hear my Uncle Lloyd and 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 you watch him, you watch his movements, mm -hmm. and then and then next thing you know, you're trying to mimic, you can't play piano, but you're trying to mimic him because he was so amazing uh -huh. right. on the keyboard. Well, right. you go down the drum key, and then you watch Uncle David smash the drums all over the creation, you know, like, yeah. oh, right. holy mackerel, you right. know. And then as a kid, you know, and we didn't know, my grandmother had her front porch was screened in. So uh, I remember as a kid, there were two drum sets set up in my, gran my grandmother's uh, front porch. Mm -hmm. Well, Uncle Dave and and um, this white dude was up there just having a drum clinic in my, on my grandmother's front porch. You know, with all the kids out there, wow, it wasn't, you know, you know, wasn't inside of the screen and porch. Mm -hmm. We were on the outside, you right. know. Yeah. And they was in there just having fun, man. And, and well, well, come to find out, my my uh, older brother Tommy said, "Yeah, man, either that was Brother Rich or Louis Belson was in there having <laughs> having the, having the drum, having fun on the drums in the grandmother's front porch." Yeah. You know, so good music. So richer, really, there than like in clubs and stuff. It's it's really that's that's where your memory is of hearing the best music. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, hearing the best music, and mm -hmm. then when James Brown came to town at the Shrine Moss, the whole band went to see James. Joe said, uh, "We <laughs> we're gonna go see James Brown." Okay, and we the whole band went to see James Brown. That's wonderful. It's Tell me what your memories are of that concert. We walked in. We was all sitting on the on, on the upper level at the Shrine Moss. And James, the curtains was closed. And James Brown band was uh, warming up before the show, warming up. And it sound just like the record yeah. in in the loud ass shrine moss. <laughs> James Brown sound just like the record. It was so so so. What we, it was amazing, <laughs> and and. And, and my brother Joe always said, you see that, you see that man, you see that, that's what, that's, that's what we got to do. Uh-huh, yeah. You know, and we don't like, yeah, that's what we got to do. <laughs> that's, that's funny. What like, year was that? You but, what year that Yeah, year? Jay Brown came to uh, Shrine Mall, was it 60, 69, 69, 70? Yeah. That's the only time James Brown came to Shrine Mall. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. And... What was the, uh, do you remember what the audience was? Was it predominantly? No, it was mixed. Black people, was it yeah, a mixed yeah, audience? Yeah, James Brown, it was mixed, and James Brown was playing a song called Lickin' Stick. And uh, it was mixed, because that's James Brown, the uh -huh. one soul brother. You're not gonna miss James Brown, I don't care what color you are. You're not <laughs> gonna miss James, that never been to town, period. Yeah. Right. Yeah, everybody was at that concert. So going from a time when James Brown couldn't even be played in this town on a, on a, on a radio to now, he comes to he comes to, to to town and does a concert and everybody shows up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're not going to hear James Brown already. Uh -huh. See, back then, and it's really interesting. Yes, back then, uh, that's why a lot of your acts didn't come to Springfield. Mm -hmm because uh, we learned this when we was traveling, especially in, in the Kansas area, Wichita and Kansas, the Kansas, where they had black radio stations. Uh -huh. When the Express would come to town, they say they, it was on the radio, Express would come to town, get your tickets, blah, 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 blah. Well, the promoter knows that if you don't have a number of tickets, so by this time, mm -hmm. then we better, you better put out the cancellation notices. So that was that was one reason why no big X couldn't come couldn't come to Springfield because there wasn't no radio stations for them to promote their acts. Mm -hmm. And were the, were you hearing that on the road that we don't, we won't come to Springfield? Oh yeah, yeah, uh -huh. they won't okay. come come to Springfield. They said Spring. First of all, they say Springfield. They say Springfield, Massachusetts. Oh, we're not from Springfield, Illinois. <laughs> 
Where are you from? <laughs> Spring from Missouri. Where's that at? <laughs> well, here you go. You got a spring where Spring from Missouri is. Right. You know, 120 miles south of Kansas City. Do they wear shoes in Springfield? It's nose works. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, man. This is like, oh, man. Let's change our name. Let's, let's tell me from Kansas City. Mm -hmm. It's easier to explain what sure. Kansas City is. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, that's really, I, I'm, well, really that's I'm really true, curious though. about that true, because um, would, would they would they look down on you because you came from Springfield? Would they say, good grief? Yes. Uh -huh. Did yes. you have to sort of prove yourself? That's that? right. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. We used to say, well, man, we put Springfield on the map. Well, they sure didn't know where it was at. Mm -hmm. Right. Look, and, and that, as they say in this day and age, that's real talk. Mm -hmm. Because people are like, oh man, we got to explain where it's spring. Here we go again. No, not there. Not Springfield, Massachusetts. Not Springfield, Illinois. That's Springfield, Missouri. That's in the Ozark. Oh, you know where she was in the Ozark? Yeah, right, yep. Yeah. Um, you had to hear all the jokes. Yeah, and you, you got to go. Hey, the man, they were white or black. You had to hear the same uh -huh. Well, that, that, that's really curious because I wonder if the Philharmonics uh, encountered that same kind of reaction when they were. Well, you know, they were on the road. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't say the reason why I couldn't say because I only, wow, I only knew the Philharmonics, uh, what little bit I knew, because of my age. Mm -hmm. And for say, I'm not young, but still yet, uh, with it, with, uh, most of their activity was prior to 65. In the 50s, yeah. Right. Yeah. So I imagine from what Mr. Cup was telling me, you know, he was a neighbor on our street, you know, it was tough back then. Wherever, but they did a lot of traveling. Yeah, right. But, and then once they slowed down, they, they had the they had the show down there in Branson. Um, well, they were also on the Ozark Jubilee in the 1950s. Yes. Right there at the Jewel Theater. Yeah. They, they appeared on there fairly regularly. Yeah, fairly regularly. Right. And, and uh, uh, they, what they done, uh, cause they wasn't, they didn't do a lot of live appearances, mm -hmm. you know, all right. this stuff. The only time that I've seen the Philharmonics, and I didn't see the, all of them at one time, I seen like three, three or four of them was at Pitch Chapel Church and, uh, they sung. They did gospel stuff a lot. They even did that on the Jubilee. Yeah. Um, and, and your, your father and uncle were connected to the Yeah, family. my father was. Right. Yeah. 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 I got the pictures, you know, my father mm -hmm. was a drum. father was a drummer. <laughs> you know, that the drums and Bedell go like Bedell drums, you know, mm -hmm. it's it just, it just the way it is. You know, it's, it's, there's a lineup, there's a lineup when it comes to drums, you know. That's what they say. That's your forte mm -hmm. until until a period. Then the guitars came in. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's you know. Well, I can't I can't end this without having you give us your impressions of Dallas Bartley. I mean, with Bebop Brown and Dallas Bartley, I mean that's got to be like huge. Yeah, yeah. Huge figures in. I in wanted to be Dallas Bartley still right next door to Michael Day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you see Uncle Dave load drums. Then you see Mr. Dallas load that bass fiddle up in his car. You know, he, and he always call us, everybody call us Little B. Dallas, Mr. Da Mr. Dallas, Little B, I know, I know you playing that electric, you know. I said, Mr. Dallas, I like to play uh, bass fiddle as mm -hmm. he call it. You know, he was my idol. You know, I used I when I do my jazz shows with with Arthur Duncan Trio, I put my bass up, kick my leg out, mm -hmm. and I don't do it because the show because I do that because the respect I have mm -hmm. for Dallas Bartley. Yeah, you know he was the man. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know. And growing up, God man, when you when you when you know guys like Uncle Dave, you know guys like Bebop Brown, and you know guys like Dallas Bartley, and Mr. Lucky. And, and 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 you not only know them, but you you get around them, you see them play. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's it's kind of hard not not to want to be like them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of sure. hard. You know, you get a good vibe from them when you watch them play. They wasn't rude to you. They always tell you, hey, give you good uh, 
instructions. You know, you don't need to do that. You know, you need to play it like this. You need to keep on practicing. And then, you know, they always give you good inspiration to keep on doing what you're doing. But they also tell you when you're messing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They wasn't it's like mentors, really. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Wasn't, they wasn't scared uh, uh, to tell you when you're messing up. And they always tag it. So, well, if you don't believe me, go ask your dad. He'll tell you. <laughs> so, a lot of reinforcements. Yeah, right, right. Was good. Well, and those those men were playing on, in clubs on Route 66. Yeah. Um, do you think it was a big deal for live music that Route 66 came through Springfield? Yes. I wish, I wish uh, my brother, my brother, Tommy, he's he played, he played all, all the places uh, back then. Cause I remember him telling me they used to go play and then and on he had to pay twenty five cents to get in. And and uh, and uh, he played with a lot of different people mm -hmm. on both sides, black and white. He played, mm -hmm. he played he, when they need a drummer, they would get they would get Tommy, you know, and. Uh, a lot of people knew him. Well, when you play with Brenda Lee, I'm not, now I'm at my brother Tommy with, with he would do some shows with Brenda Lee. I'm pretty sure it's all up and down. Route 66. All up and down Route 66, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, she was wanting to take him to be the drum with her on some road trips. Mm -hmm. Leo B. Dell. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think he said no to those? Because to the USO and to Lee? Well, you know, my dad knew. My dad foreseen that his sons was going to be musicians or entertainers, because that's really what he, he was. Mm -hmm. He just couldn't do it the way he wanted to. Mm -hmm. But he also knew the dangers. And I think him and my mom said, well, I'm not going to risk my, losing my boys out mm -hmm. there, you know? Yep. If they all can't stay together and look after one another, one's not going by themselves. Right. And they didn't let it happen. I think they did, did make sure that the sons are protected. Right. Because it was rough back then. You didn't, you know, you didn't run down to Arkansas in, in 60, 61, uh, playing country and you're only black dude, you're on drums, mm -hmm. you may not come back out of there. Yeah, right. Sure. And I think my father, even though uh, uh, Tommy was wanting to go, he didn't question it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He said, well, that's just the way it was. Right, right. And, and you can't fault that because back then, that was that was life in USA. Yeah. <laughs> And, and Route 66, it brought traffic uh -huh. into into Springfield. Which mm -hmm. do you think that was helpful for? Yeah, for you know, I wish, I wish, I wish there, that strip was like Bell Street. Mm -hmm. You know what in, I mean? In Memphis, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you can come down Route 66, and God, you could all you those could, clubs. You yeah. could see, you can have all all what you want to eat, all what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, I'm surprised that it didn't turn. It almost tried to turn turn out like that. Uh, which way? Once you get it from what Jefferson Street going going west on College. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I thought that might be where it might end up to. It might in the future, but uh, they they got the right idea about it because it is it is one spot that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Route mm -hmm. 66. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and did you know? If, if somebody, when you were coming along, said something about Route 66, would you have known what they were talking about? You ready for this? Yes. That's interesting. Because, you know why I come? Todd and Buzz. Todd and Buzz, used, there used to be a tele, television show called Route 66. Yes. <laughs> so if you watch Route 66 like we did, and you did? Uh-huh. And you learned, oh, here they come to this town. Oh, here they come to this town. Wow, they come all the way to Missouri. Route 66. <laughs> Interesting. And, and, you, and, and, and you learned about Route 66. And Nat King Cole? The, I mean, did, did, that, did that resonate with you at all? Nat King Cole, Moms Medley, 
Maybelline. Uh, they all resonated. Mm -hmm. And Ella Fitzgerald, mm -hmm. they all resonated at my house. My mom, that's my mom, played uh -huh. a lot on the stereo mm -hmm. on a Sunday. You wake up, she might play uh, Ella Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. Then when you get home to church, it might be mom and Mabel. Yeah. Mom was rocking the house. And then, mellow down in the evening, she, my dad want to hear some that. Mm -hmm. And these, and this, and that's the way it was. Did people ever request that you play the song Route 66? Yes. <laughs> yes. But not, and did you play it? <laughs> yes. But I was in Texas a lot. Uh -huh. I, I, I played, uh, I played with a group called DVG and High Maintenance. Uh -huh. And uh, she done a lot of shows that, uh, re you know, per se, request. And uh, uh, I had to learn Route 66. And yeah. the next thing I know, I was playing Route 66. And then the next thing you know, you learn the words to Route 66. <laughs> yeah, right, right. yeah I, had, I, had, I had to pull off Route 56. Not only pull it off, I had to learn it. Sure, sure. You know, so yeah. Yeah, just, that's great. It, it's, 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 it's part, it's part, it's all mess up, play Route 56. Okay, what key you want to do it in? Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah, that's that's great. Six. You learn you learn everything when it comes to part of from which you live. Mm -hmm. You know, you better learn a little bit about it. Yeah. You know, right. This cause is is a lot of music, but there's a lot of history that runs up and down that highway. You know, and you got to know a little bit of something. Sure. You know, Tracy, I could talk to you for three hours. Oh, I know. What What have I left out? I think we've talked about everything um, that was on my list. <laughs> Um, you did, did, there, did you ever go to Alberta's? It was already past at the time, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think Tommy ever played at Alberta's in the rumpus room? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Dolan Park. I was going to ask about that. That was popular. Yeah. Boys and Girls Club on Boom Boom. Mm hmm That was a hot spot for, for us to play. Mm hmm the American Legion post? All oh, the American Legion down there on Kimbrew. Now, is that Ben? Kimbrew? Oh. Is that Kimbrew? Yeah. yeah. American Legion, Kimbrew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was one of the spots where they had a lot of the places to rent to have their little private parties. Mm -hmm. So that, that was stage two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had, they, they, had, they, had, they had stage there. That was one of the places where uh, another famous, no, um, my dad, uh, I think it was the Express was playing there. And uh, Cardinalia's brothers and sister Rose was in town. And they came down to hear the Express play. And they was needing a keyboard player to go with them on the next tour. And they wanted Larry to meet them. <laughs> and what? <laughs> and what they <laughs> Well, well, if you want Larry, you're going to have to go over to 1448 and ask Leo be there. <laughs> and the answer was no. <laughs> so, so, so much for Cornelius Brothers and Sister oh, yeah. So, opportunity not, but you know what they say, timing is everything. Yeah. Right place at the right time. Yeah, sure. You know? Yeah. It was the right place. It just wasn't the right, right. time. So oh. you can't you can't you can't you can't you can't hate it. You can just like it's just the way it was. You know? Well this is probably the right time for us to end this. I, 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 I don't want to take up it. your entire day. This has just been fascinating. Thank you so much. I appreciate much. it. Thank, Thank you very you. much.